Here's your news for December 28th, 2019. We are kicking off today's video with news from SmackDown as Daniel Bryan will get one more shot at the Universal Championship. After coming up short against The Fiend at Survivor Series, Bryan met King Corbin in The Miz to determine the number one contender for Wyatt, though this match quickly changed. Mere minutes into the opener, Roman Reigns appeared and chased off the 2019 King of the Ring winner, and the decision was made to have Bryan and Miz face off in singles action. The Lone Wolf only agreed to return to the match when Reigns was ejected from the arena, but after the Big Dog returned and once again scared off Corbin and his pal Dolph Ziggler, Bryan got the submission victory over The Miz to earn a title match at the 2020 Royal Rumble. This result shouldn't be too surprising, as it was expected that Bryan and Wyatt would face at the Rumble, with rumors speculating that the Wyatt-Miz non-title match at TLC earlier this month was only done to extend The Fiend's feud with Daniel Bryan. This is so far the only match confirmed for the show, aside from the two traditional Royal Rumble matches, and though it hasn't been confirmed, there is speculation that both the men and women's matches will feature 10 superstars from Raw, 10 from SmackDown, and 10 from NXT. Two superstars who may be in the Royal Rumble match despite being missing for months is the Usos, as the former tag team champions have been absent since before SummerSlam this year. This absence is mostly down to Jimmy Uso, who had been dealing with a DUI arrest, and when you remember that this is Jimmy's second arrest this year, it's not hard to see why the WWE would be hesitant to bring back the team. With that said though, it looks like the Samoan brothers may be ready to return, as according to WrestleVotes, the company's creative teams have been instructed to come up with a return angle for the duo. The same report says that while the pair are slated to remain on Raw, that could easily change, and time will tell just what the future holds for Jimmy and Jay, and if they'll still be treated the same by WWE after a highly controversial year. Though 2019 may not have been the year for the Usos, their cousin Roman Reigns has had a huge 12 months, including returning from his battle with leukemia in February this year. Now, the Big Dog is closing out 2019 in a huge way, as he will represent the WWE on Fox's New Year's Eve show that will air on December 31st. After this week's SmackDown, Reigns defeated Dolph Ziggler in a match that will be aired next week, and the WWE even brought in their celebrity friend Maria Menounos to serve as the special guest ring announcer. A huge wrestling fan who has wrestled a handful of times for WWE, Menounos will also serve as the co-host for the Fox New Year's Eve special alongside fellow WWE fan and celebrity Rob Gronkowski. WWE have also announced that more superstars will be appearing on the New Year's Eve special, but so far, none have been confirmed. This match against Ziggler isn't the only huge contest for the Big Dog, as the WWE has also announced a match months in advance between Reigns and Baron Corbin. On February 7th, the SAP Center in San Jose, California will play host to WWE SmackDown, and in an advertisement for the show, it was announced that Reigns and Corbin will face off in a Loser Eats Dog Food match. This stipulation comes off the back of the big dog being covered in dog food several weeks back by Corbin and Ziggler, and with the match being scheduled for February, this should give fans some idea just how long this feud will last. Also on the February 7th show, Daniel Bryan is set to face the fiend Bray Wyatt, as it seems these two will still be battling after the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Over to AEW now, and despite a monumental first year for the company, this week saw a setback for Cody Rhodes. Recently, the AEW vice president tried to file a trademark for the name of his late father, Dusty Rhodes, but this filing has been rejected for a series of reasons. Speaking to Pro Wrestling Sheet, Cody's legal team explained that the United States Patent Office issued a refusal, as the Dusty Rhodes name is too similar to Dustin Rhodes, the trademarked name owned by Cody's brother and current AEW wrestler. Despite the setback, Cody's legal team said that they expect the matter to be resolved quickly and expect Cody to have full control of his father's name in the not-so-distant future. Though Cody doesn't outright own his father's name, he has revealed that he gave WWE permission to use Dusty's name for their upcoming 2020 Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, and details of the tournament will be announced on next week's edition of NXT. More AEW news now, as after the company opted to not host a show this past Wednesday on Christmas Day, the company has had to change a title match for the New Year's Day show. 
Originally, Chris Statlander was slated to compete for the AEW Women's Championship against the champion Riho, but the company revealed on Twitter that Statlander won't be able to appear due to prior commitments. This doesn't mean that Riho will have the night off, though, as instead she will defend her title against Britt Baker, Hikaru Shida, and Nyla Rose, the latter of whom she defeated to become the first AEW Women's Champion on the pilot episode of Dynamite. In a follow-up tweet, the company confirmed that Statlander will get the title opportunity she earned, though this match will take place on the January 8th edition of Dynamite in South Haven, Missouri, against whoever is the AEW Women's Champion at the time. From one women's championship to another now, as the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship has had plenty of historic moments since being launched just over three years ago. Yesterday, though, reigning SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley made history as she became the longest reigning SmackDown Women's Champion ever, having a combined 217 days with the title across two reigns. Bayley's first reign started this year at Money in the Bank when she cashed in the coveted briefcase she had won earlier that night to win the gold from new champion Charlotte Flair. After losing the gold back to the Queen at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, Bayley won the title back just five days later and has now replaced Becky Lynch's three reigns with the gold to become the longest reigning champion. Being SmackDown Women's Champion has also caused huge changes in Bayley, who won the title as a face but is now one of WWE's most loathed heels. And with no end to her title reign in sight, expect the longest reigning women's champion to keep adding days to her record. We're heading back over to Raw now as after what happened on the latest episode of The Red Brand, it looks like Samoa Joe's time at the commentary desk has come to an end. This week, the Samoan submission machine was attacked by the AOP in Seth Rollins after Joe refused to move from the commentary desk, as he's been calling the action with Jerry Lawler and Vic Joseph due to being unable to compete with a broken thumb. In this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer said that the WWE will have a new announcer to take over from Joe as soon as this Monday, but fans shouldn't expect Dio Madden to fill the chair. Before Joe took his talents to the commentary desk, Madden worked on the Raw commentary team with The King and Joseph, but was reportedly pulled due to Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn not being fans of his commentary. This all worked out in the end, as Madden still had aspirations to continue his wrestling career, and was assaulted by Brock Lesnar on the November 4th edition of Raw to give an on-screen reason for Madden to return to the ring. Whoever replaces Joe will have a tall task ahead of them, as Joe's commentary has received high praise from fans, and for now, fans will just have to wait and see, or should that be here, who replaces the former US champion. Back to AEW now, and while the company has done a lot of things similar to WWE in the year that they've existed, that doesn't mean the company will be a carbon copy of the Vince McMahon-led promotion. Earlier this week, WrestleVotes claimed that the new promotion is looking to add an authority figure to their weekly Dynamite show, and according to them, this future commissioner is expected to be Taz. The former ECW world champion is scheduled to be on next week's episode of Dynamite, and did recently finish his job with CBS Radio. But according to Dave Meltzer, that doesn't mean that Taz will be the new commissioner. In a tweet of his own, the Wrestling Observer analyst said that Taz will serve on Dynamite as an announcer, and went on to say that the company has no plans for a TV authority figure. Authority figures in wrestling such as general managers and commissioners have been a staple of wrestling for decades, but it does seem like WWE has tried to retire the concept in recent months. With that in mind, there's no reason to believe that AEW would bring in an authority figure of their own, and hopefully fans will get a better understanding of what's going on next week when the human suplex machine appears. As AEW opted not to do a Christmas Day edition of Dynamite, there was no competition in the Wednesday Night Wars, but that didn't stop the pre-taped edition of NXT from doing well. This past Wednesday, the gold brand drew in an average of 831,000 viewers over their two hours, and given that they aired this show during one of the weakest nights for television and the show was taped, the WWE should be very happy with that number. Next week's New Year's Day edition of NXT will be the year-end awards episode of NXT, meaning that there will be little to no wrestling on the show, so fans will have to wait until both NXT and Dynamite are back to normal on January 8th to see which show dominates the Wednesday Night Wars. And finally today we're ending with the results from Friday Night Smackdown as the show had plenty more on offer than the Triple Threat number 1 contenders match for the Universal title. After Roman Reigns sent King Corbin running to kick off the show, it was time for some six-man tag team action, 
as The New Day and Braun Strowman defeated Shinsuke Nakamura, Cesaro, and Sami Zayn. After the Monster Among Men got the pin over the Intercontinental Champion, Strowman's night wasn't over just yet, as after some encouragement by Kofi and Big E, the Monster showed off his best dance moves, and while Nakamura got those hands, the fans in Detroit got those hips. In women's division action, Carmella looked to continue her hot streak after pinning Sonya Deville last week as she went one-on-one -on -one with Deville's tag team partner Mandy Rose. After the Golden Goddess chose not to be in Deville's corner last week, Rose also went into this match on her own. And after a stern slap and kick straight to the dome, Carmella got her second straight victory against Fire and Desire. After King Corbin returned to the arena and agreed to the triple threat match, it was time for SmackDown's second women's segment as Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross hosted their talk show segment, A Moment of Bliss, with special guest Lacey Evans. The sassy Southern Belle didn't mince her words when she said she would not stand for Sasha Banks' recent taunting of Evans' daughter Summer, and after recruiting Dana Brooke to her side, marched to the ring for an impromptu tag team match against Banks and Bailey. During an impressive showing by Evans and Brooke, both of whom who have had their issues with the Boss and Hug connection, it was Banks and Bailey who reigned supreme, with the Boss locking in the bank statement to get the submission victory over the sassy Southern Belle. As we've discussed, the main event saw Daniel Bryan defeat both The Miz and King Corbin to earn one more shot at The Fiend, but post-match, Bray Wyatt decided to make his presence known. Appearing on the Titan Tron from the Firefly Funhouse, the Universal Champion asked Bryan if he was willing to do whatever it takes to capture the Universal title and let him in. Unsurprisingly, Bryan's answer was a resounding yes chant, as the Eco Warrior has plenty of confidence going into the Universal title match on January 26th.